Hi, I'm Dubba. I'm the director of Music Tech Fest, and we have a musical treat for you this week. I'm going to focus on something special we did at MTF Stockholm and with a couple of our partners. It's called the MTF Trackathon. And as you can probably tell from the name, a trackathon is kind of like a hackathon, but for music producers. Same basic concept. Here are some tools and materials. Here's 24 hours. Here's a challenge. Let's see what you can make. The best tracks we put together and release online as an EP via Amuse.io, so it all goes out to the big streaming platforms to raise money for a good cause, with the overall winner of the trackathon picking the charity. We also ran an online competition in parallel with our partners Splice.com, so people who weren't able to take part in Stockholm could still jump on board, which really opened the field right out, and as you'll hear, the calibre of tunes submitted was just phenomenal. It was the third time we'd run the trackathon at Music Tech Fest, and this time around, the challenge was set by UK producer Laura Bettinson, aka FAM, who worked with the producers, did a little coaching and help along the way, kept everyone on track, and worked with our panel of industry expert judges to select the winners, both at the live event and for the online competition. From Music Tech Fest Stockholm, this is the MTF Splice Trackathon. <laughs> Hey, my name is Fam, or Fem, as everybody pronounces it. Uh, and my name is Laura. Real name is Laura. I'm a producer and a, a DJ and a singer from London, UK. Uh, my name is Garrett Frierson. Uh, I am the artist marketing manager at Splice.com, and I am in charge of our remix contest and producer challenges here. My name is Ruben Svensson. I'm a Swedish producer, mix engineer, songwriter, guitar player. And I write songs and build robots as well. I'm an engineer. the trackathon um trackathon was uh, a 24-hour competition um for producers to say make a track out of a set of samples that i had curated it was the first time as myself that i've actually used splice the platform uh, i'd heard about it and i'd seen its adverts all over facebook but i'd never actually dived in um to investigate what it was all about um and i was very very impressed to um say to be able to look in there and find the kind of the absolutely vast catalogue they have of sounds and really good sounds that was really pleasing to hear that they weren't just you know terrible kind of imitations of you know uh real instruments or anything like that they're really really interesting um some really unique samples in there so garrett tell me a little bit about splice uh splice is a website that is dedicated to helping musicians uh, achieve their dreams by giving them the tools they need to make music, to learn about music, and to give them opportunities to put their talents to use and to connect with other musicians. So I put together a sample pack of sounds that I thought were interesting, that I thought might give people a starting point. Um, and the idea was that the producers would make a track within 24 hours and then um, deliver that into a competition. And then we decided what the best tracks were to be released on an EP. So I studied KDH as a uh, engineering, ma taking a master's in mechatronics. So I really want to like get a chance to combine uh, technology and music. And that's actually why I applied. I was approved for the, the trackathon. So producing a song, which is something that I really like to do as well. So I felt it might be a great chance to still like meet a lot of makers and, and people while doing something that I'm maybe I'm a bit more confident in right now. Um, and it was crazy. It was crazy. It was a great competition. Um, and the people there um, just really threw themselves into it. They were very, very open to it. And just uh, they we had a little bit of cross collaboration as well between um there was, as well as the trackathon, there was a hackathon running at the same time. And it was nice to see some cross collaboration there. And there was some singers and other instrumentalists that you say collaborated together. And that was nice. It was good. It wasn't just, um, you know, 
people on their laptops with their headphones kind of isolated for 24 hours there was you know some nice collaboration which was good Ruben, you worked with New York-based vocalist Nina Butler for your track Cold that we just heard a little of. How did that collaboration come about? Yeah, actually, she was like, um, we were having a meeting, uh, a briefing for the, the trackathon, and she just came up and said like, hi, I haven't really found a group downstairs, uh, but I like to sing, I like to write, so hit me up. And at the time, I was like, yeah, I really just want to get into the project, so... I didn't pay too much attention, but then there was a jam room, so we played some music together, and she was a really great singer, so then I reconsidered and asked her if she wanted to collaborate. And uh, she wanted to, and then we did, and it turned out great, so I'm really thankful for that. Uh, So the challenge was for producers to take a sample pack that had been curated by Femme from the Splice Sound Sample Library, She went into the Splice Sound sample library and curated um, uh, a a number of her favorite sounds that she liked from there. And we took that curated sample pack and gave it to producers. And in most of the music that I make, and most of the music that moves me, pop music that moves me anyway, um, there's an element that I call them sad bangers. Sad banger. They have like a melancholic thread through them, but at the same time, they make you want to kind of dance on, you know, they, you're on the dance floor basically, like crying your heart out. And I really was interested to see um, whether um, the producers could capture a feeling out of, you know, just a set of, in some ways, quite sterile samples, um, you know, just to be given a set of samples and say, you just use one of these and manipulate it however you want, but you've got to make something that moves me. Um, that was really my idea behind it. And especially because the competition was held in Stockholm. Uh, Stockholm has a really rich history of sad bangers and, and melancholic pop music. Um, and so I thought that it might appeal to kind of the, their culture and um, their musical history. So I was intrigued to see what kind of music they'd make. Yeah, Robin's Dancing on My Own is definitely something that springs to mind. Very much, Dancing on My Own. And also Robin is like the queen of the sad banger. Um, Call Your Girlfriend, that's another massive sad banger that you say you're, you're dancing your heart out, but you know your heart's breaking at the same time. Um, yeah, she's very, very good at those. You know, I was really surprised at the at the range of what people came up with with that instructions. It's really always amazing to hear how people interpret the uh, instructions of a contest and kind of understands words differently. So there's a lot of amazing music that came out of it that I did not expect. Yeah, so it's like the the, the, the time span was, of course, a, a limiting factor as well as the like... There wasn't any real restriction on using the samples given, but I, I challenged myself to use as much as possible, which I did. And that kind of like, I, I feel constraints create or necessitate creativity. So a lot of the stuff like just happened because I couldn't really stay long on decisions. I just had to make them and, and keep moving. And I guess that kind of created, like you had to go on gut feeling. and that translates into good music maybe i'm not sure but it was, it was a good challenge i guess a bit stressful at the end though but it worked out garrett how did splice get involved with mtf stockholm and how did that play out uh so the music tech fest came through one of my colleagues she brought this opportunity to us and we figured out there was an opportunity for us to connect with the tech fest and uh, figure out a kind of unique way that we could get involved and uh, open it up for not just the people who are going to be at the physical event, but also give producers around the world a chance to participate and connect with the festival. Interestingly, the the music that was made on the 24-hour trackathon was way less commercial in some ways. We didn't have, we had maybe one or two more uh, tr- kind of uh, commercial EDM tracks, well, maybe even one, um, that were like, oh, okay, but you know, that's kind of something that I would imagine would have cropped up more, but it didn't. Like the genres, there were some completely genreless songs that were made on the 24 hour track as well. There were some really wild, quite progressive um, places that people took those samples and took their tracks, um, which was really refreshing. Um, when it came to the 20, um, with the online, um, competition there was a lot more 
of the genres I was expecting to hear, I guess, in some ways, like the trap, um, kind of electronic trap stuff and uh, uh, the SoundCloud kind of rap and um, the EDM kind of stuff that was a little bit more expected. So in some ways, even though there was such a huge amount of tracks, um, the, the ones that were a little bit more different um, really stood out. Um, so, it, yeah, it was yeah a lot more tracks made, but equally, you, you know what you like when you hear it, don't you? I mean, say we both listen to them and you kind of immediately, I, I didn't find it too difficult to kind of make it, like kind of get it down to about 20 tracks that I really enjoyed and then just kind of keep going through them. And, um, but it was, it was still, it was great to hear why it was made and some people took them and yeah, some very, uh, say some people just used all the samples and some people probably didn't even use one but said they'd used a hi-hat or something, you know, so it's cool just to see how people are working in different ways they work with one set of sounds. Yeah, we run uh, a lot of competitions on Splice. We're usually putting up between one and three new competitions a week. Um, so this one was uh, a little unique because uh, it was one of our first ones that was more kind of event focused as opposed to uh, being focused on a single artist uh, or anything like that. So it was great connecting with Femme and working with her to uh, you know, create the the sample pack that people uh, could use to create their music with, and uh, working with you in the the tech fest to kind of give it a, a different feeling and a different edge than a lot of our contests had because it, it was something new and it, it was a, a way for people to to learn about what you were doing as well as share their talents with you. So I guess it's time to make some changes. As the leaves all fall off the trees My name is Connor um, But my artist name is Callan So <laughs> Alright, call me Callan I am a music producer That does pop and EDM Out in Nashville, Tennessee Songs command you how to feel, right? So when you say sad banger, I, I would hear a song, and if it's sad, I'm gonna feel that sadness, but I'm gonna be like, ha like happy sad. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know what the word to describe that is. It's like when you hear a sad song and you're you're moved by it. You know what I mean? It's like it gives you kind of a release because you're like relating or something. The song is kind of about, it's kind of about being ready to move on to, to better things, but not denying other people that chance. And it, for me, the song, I, I wrote the song when I was kind of having an aha moment in my life, as cheesy as it sounds, I was kind of having a realization that I that music is meant for other people not not meant for you to just bury your feelings and thoughts inside and just for me it would be like I just stay inside all day and just write and produce by myself and then see my friends but secretly just want to go back home and do it <laughs> so for for me it was kind of a realization of like um, the aha moment at least was just kind of a realization that music is supposed to be for people so not not for yourself you're supposed to gift it to other people it's supposed to be a release for everyone and so I started with I started writing with that mentality and then the song silver and gold came out and I was just going through a breakup at the certain point and found someone I really loved and uh, the song just kind of came together and I had I had other people help me with the song too so it was kind of my like first first like song I felt proud of you know what I mean so I'm super excited about it, and I really, I'm really stoked that you guys like it. 
So how did you get involved in the Splice Trackathon? You know what, man? I was just, like, I, when I started, I was very young when I started using Ableton, and I had used Splice once before, because I was trying to get into collaboration with people, because I felt like that would be a cool way to get better at production. I had some buddies in LA that are releasing sample packs on Splice, and I was like, oh, I should try this. And uh, I, I've done about five of them now. And um, the one with Fem just kind of, uh, yeah, just kind of clicked. I, I think the community events are really cool. I've, I've been trying to do as many as possible. So your song's going to be on the Trackathon charity EP. Then what's next? Um, I get famous. <laughs> you guys make me famous, right? <laughs> yeah, no. Really let go to... Uh, well, so I did a lot of research. Uh, I found some some smaller, like uh, Swedish Sweden-based charities. I, I decided pretty early that I wanted to do something with, uh, like in regards to music somehow, because that's where it all came from. And we have a pretty good system in Sweden to get young people, like they could have the opportunity to play instruments at a pretty early age at affordable, like it's funded by the government. So, and and I guess that's kind of where where it started for me somehow not maybe directly but I, I know a lot of other people so I wanted to give that chance to to other children that maybe doesn't have the opportunity due to different circumstances in their country or whatever so I found this uh, uh, musicians without borders and I, I heard like from from uh, uh, doctors without borders and there, there's an organization in Sweden called clowns without borders as well like just to give this the magic of music to people who who maybe have it harder to to receive it directly. And, and I felt that will probably create a lot of interesting sounds in the future and uh, also bring a lot of happiness to to people that maybe have, have it really hard a lot of the time. I think that's fantastic. I think that's really fantastic. Because I think at um, a time where it's easy for music to be kind of in some ways marginalized and especially in um, the kind of political climate in I can only speak for the UK but you know right now we're closing our borders or trying to um I think it's really important charities like that who are say reaching out and trying to make connect, cross-cultural connections between different territories um, and help support and cultivate a rich musical um scene in whatever country that is I think that's super important um likewise say in the UK I love to support um youth music charities you know charities that are putting money behind youth um and giving them access to equipment um because it's kind of ironic in some ways that music's become easier and easier easier to make you can say with a laptop and a set of headphones and a set of speakers you can kind of produce tracks that are ready to put up on Spotify in a matter of hours but um you know, there's still a lot of people out there who don't have access to that equipment, don't have the funding to be able to set themselves up with um, that kind of equipment. Um, and so I think charities that are helping people support people's creativity in that way are super important because we need a more diverse and gender balanced industry. You know, we really do. Uh, supporting diversity across the global music industry, um, I think is really important. So I'm very pleased that that's the charity that was chosen. So how international was the overall online MTF trackathon then? Um, you know, it's hard to say specifically, but uh, we do know that there was, you know, uh, participants from all over the United States, Canada, and Europe. Um, and then I think there was at least a few... We definitely had some entries from uh, Latin America as well, and a couple from Asia. Were there any major surprises in there? Uh, well, the winning track for me was a real surprise. I mean, I would have, um, in in the online competition, it was just like, I listened to it, and I was like, I mean, that's releasable right now. It was really, really, yeah, impressive. Um, and I remember hearing it, and I just thought, wow, it was just, yeah, it, was, it really stood out for me. It's like a very... Um, taste. It was really tasteful electronic music, um, but with a vocal. So you, there was a human connection there, um, and it was. It kind of reminded me of Caribou's um, "I Can't Do Without You" or something like that. You know, something that's like cool, but I could see would have mainstream kind of crossover appeal. Um, and I was, I was, yeah, I was very pleasing to hear that track. That really stood out for me.
that there were there were a few tunes that um, really just I'm always really impressed when uh, an artist can get the atmosphere to fit the the atmosphere and the melody to kind of fit their lyric really well where the the music is telling the same story as the words and I remember specifically a few tracks that really did that for me. Ruben, you were the overall winner of the 24-hour trackathon at MTF Stockholm itself. Was that a surprise? Well, <laughs> I was kind of confident. Like it, it was a great challenge, but it ended up like being sounding better than anything I, I've done before, I guess. And I got a lot of good feedback from, from the other participants. So I, I was pretty confident. I wasn't sure I was going to win, but uh, I, I kind of like, I wasn't too surprised, I guess. Um, I really like the beat initially, like that the way when it goes into that uh, break, um, and it was really unexpected. And I remember Ruben making his as he was making his track, and he was really like struggling with where it was going and not sure. And then when I heard the finished thing, I was like, "Wow, okay, this is where you went." And and that vocal over the top, and they really uh, managed to kind of write a song. Which is great because it's quite, I mean, fairly straightforward now with a platform like Splice to be able to throw a track together quite quickly using samples if you're, if you're not trying to craft a, a song out of it. You can make a decent sounding track very quickly. But um, they met on the camp, they'd never worked with each other before, um, and they wrote that really complete sounding song um, in very little time. Uh, and that really, I thought they really kind of nailed the, the brief as well. Um, and it was just, it was really pleasing to see that collaboration and that really struck a chord with me. So I was like, okay, you haven't, you say you haven't just worked on your own and kind of stayed in your own world. You've really pushed yourself out there and, and found a, somebody to collaborate with and you've really made something. Um, and that is, that's hard to achieve in professional sessions day in, day out um, when you don't know people that you're working with, you know. So to be in a, a camp situation, they probably never ever worked like that before. I was, I was very impressed with what they managed to make. is a lot on the pipeline for 2019. Um, some big announcements that I can't talk about that uh, will definitely make it out there your way and uh, stay on the, the, you know, the pipe for those. But things I can talk about, at least in the contest space, we're launching our first uh, holy original music talent search next week. It's going to be called Next Up. Um, it's launching January 7th. It is partnered with... Uh, uh, Ditto, the online uh, PR agency and, and uh, social media service, um, as well as Proximity, the music label and uh, music curation service, which is one of the largest uh, online entities for electronic music in the world. Uh, so we are starting a challenge search competition with both of them to find uh, basically the next undiscovered electronic music uh, powerhouse. Uh, there, we know that there's a lot of really talented producers in their bedrooms, in their parents' basements, on their college dorm rooms, you know, at home in between their shifts, at, at working at whatever their jobs are. Um, and there's a lot of people out there pursuing their passion who are really talented, who just haven't found their first crack in the door that they can push on to really find their way into the music industry to, despite their talent. So this year 
with things like Next Up and other initiatives we're, we're pushing, we're really trying to help those artists uh, find their way into the industry and, and to get a foothold so that we can be a part not just of the right now we, we are really integrated in in a lot of musicians creation process of creating the music so we're doing a lot of work there to make that better and to help streamline that but on the other side we're working to now become a part of the the career side of musicians where we want to create resources that will help people further their careers that will show them the ways that they can really make a life for themselves in music in the 21st century. So there's a lot of initiatives that we're working on that are going to be doing that for both musicians and sound designers and, and opening up the platform to, to making it really equitable and, and uh, a place that people can feel confident not in just making their music, but then in finding the right ways to get their music out there. Okay, so final thoughts. Fam, this was your first Music Tech Fest. What did you make of it all? Um, I think it's just a great event. Like it was the first event of its kind that I've ever been to. I've never been to a hackathon. Say I'm, I have an interest in music and music tech, but I've never been to like an organised kind of event conference like that. So it was, um, it was wild just to see the the ideas that people are coming up with. And what was so exciting it was just that it's youth led. You know, so many people were, you know, they're students or they're just starting out their careers and the ideas that they were coming up with, um, especially in the hackathon, um, were just like mind bending and really eye opening. And um, I was really excited about that. So I left quite inspired uh, by the whole thing, by the music, by the trackathon and the hackathon, um, just to see that, you know, these the young people were given a space to kind of really explore these massive ideas and given as much support as, as they could muster to to help try to realize them in in 24 hours that was crazy to me um and it was really exciting so definitely if there's anybody out there with an interest in music and tech and, and how you can kind of change the world i would definitely recommend getting involved with it um yeah it was very cool mm-hmm.